Welcome to an overview of FIR Designer version 3. Fur Designer is an application for designing both fur filters and mixed IIR and FIR processing solutions for loudspeakers. It takes in measurements in a variety of formats and exports filter coefficients that can be loaded into any fur capable processor or amplifier. Fur Designer has two basic workflows. Today, I'm going to talk mainly about the default workflow that involves loading a loudspeaker measurement and designing a filter to change the measurement into the response we would like. This workflow uses the first nine tabs you can see here. If you would like to design a fur filter without reference to a measurement, switch to the direct design workflow, but we'll leave that for another video. Now let's load a previous project and take a look at the tabs. In this project, Fur Designer is being used to magnitude and phase correct a passive 12 inch and horn two way install loudspeaker. The import tab is used to load a loudspeaker measurement and adjust its time alignment to remove any bolt delay and get the phase response in a range we can work with on the following tabs. Fur Designer can import a variety of file formats, some open and some proprietary, including data from Smart, SysTune, and Ezra. It can also live stream spectrum and transfer function measurements from Smart. We'll demonstrate this near the end of the video. This measurement shows how the high frequency driver lags the low frequency driver due to the depth of the horn. If we look at the original measurement as it was imported, a lot of its phase is relatively close to 180 degrees. We have a few choices in moving the measurement to make it usable. We can align to the LF driver as follows, which then has a bolt delay on the HF, which is hard to correct with filtering, or we can invert the measurement and align to the HF. And this puts most of the phase near zero degrees. The target tab is where we can specify the magnitude and phase we would like the filtered loudspeaker to have. The target is the combined response of four magnitude and phase sources. The target curve is used to define a magnitude or EQ profile using slope segments and a base shelf. This tab doesn't affect the target phase. The target magnitude tab can be used to create a magnitude profile from common filter prototypes. Each filter prototype can have zero minimum or maximum phase. Low and high crossover filters can also be set here as the target for the fur workflow. The target phase tab can be used to create a phase profile using common all pass filter prototypes as well as our unique fourth order parametric phase filter. And finally, the target file tab can be used to load a specific impulse response or transfer function. This can be any of the same file formats that can be loaded on the import tab. What this means is we can use another loudspeaker as the target response, or we could load a response previously created in Fur Designer using the direct design mode. Before looking at the Fur tabs, there are two other tabs we should note. The Gain Polarity Delay tab can be used to set specific alignment delay and gain that will be used in the processor. For example, for aligning drivers in a multi way. The IIR Filters tab provides emulation of any IIR filtering that will also be used in the processor. Since processor brands often have different interpretations of bandwidth and or Q, a branded filter mode can be selected so that the IIR filter behavior matches the processor. Also, IIR filter coefficients and parameter settings can be saved to a text file. Here, we'll just add one high pass filter. Now let's take a look at the Magnitude Adjustment tab. This is the first of the five fur filter tabs. Here, we use common filter prototypes like parametric bandpass and shelf filters to shape the loudspeaker response. The important thing to note on this tab is how to generate the green line, which is the filter shape. In the top plot, the thin blue line is the loudspeaker magnitude, including any gain, polarity, delay, and IIR processing. But it's inverted and has the target EQ curve applied. 
The aim here is to create a filter curve, the green line, that roughly matches the thin blue line. Here you can see I've done this using three filters, and the thicker blue line in the lower plot shows the effect of the green filter curve on the loudspeaker response. Now the response looks flatter and closer in shape to the target curve. The two red lines in the lower plot show the loudspeaker phase before and after the green curve. That is, the fur filter so far has been applied. It's worth noting that any of the filters in the upper left can also be minimum phase, like regular IIR base filtering, linear phase, or maximum phase. And as you use these, it's worth noting the effect on the phase in the lower plot, and choosing filters that result in the loudspeaker phase tending towards the target phase from the target tab. And in this example, the target phase we want is flat. Another thing to note is it's generally best to avoid boosting too much, otherwise the fur filter coefficients may clip at export. The Phase Adjustment tab is where we can use all pass filter prototypes to shape the phase of the loudspeaker. The loudspeaker has a 360 degree phase rotation due to the passive crossover. The red line in the upper plot is the loudspeaker phase after filtering from the previous tabs, but it's inverted and has the target phase applied. The aim here is to create a phase curve, the green line, that roughly matches the thin red line. And here, I've used one second order all pass and two fourth order parametric filters to create the green line. The thicker red line in the lower plot shows the effect of the green phase filter. The phase is now approximately flat, from about 300 Hz to 10 kHz. The filter loudspeaker magnitude response from the previous tab is also shown here, just for reference. So let's move on to the Auto Mag tab. On this tab, Fur Designer can automatically track the inverted magnitude. That's the magnitude after filtering by all the previous tabs, and again with the target response applied. And it can automatically create a filter magnitude or EQ profile, which is the green line. Three frequency bands are enabled, just in case different smoothing is useful in different parts of the spectrum. Here, for example, I've used a coarser smoothing third octave at low frequencies and a finer smoothing twelfth octave at high frequencies. Here also the inverted magnitude response in the top plot might be far away from 0 dB. If this is the case, the auto mag process will try and follow it, resulting in sharp steps in the automatically designed filter at the band edges. Here I've moved the response down so that the band start is close to flat. Also, the auto mag process can generate either a minimum phase response or a linear flat phase response. Now to the second last fur filter tab, the auto phase. Here, the light red line in the top plot is the loudspeaker phase after all previous filtering and with the target phase applied. The auto phase process generates a phase curve to track this, which is the green line. We need to make some adjustments to the band range. Remember that the time alignment on the import tab and the fur filtering on the phase adjustment tab both work together to get the phase quite close to our target, above about 500 Hz. In this case, zero degrees. This really helps the auto phase process. If there are discontinuities in the phase coming into this tab, the auto phase process may struggle to create a smooth phase filter. The result of applying this phase filter is shown in the thick red line in the lower plot. The loudspeaker phase is now quite flat. Now the last fur tab is the voicing tab, and this could be used to apply filtering after the automatic methods to intentionally move the response away from the target. Let's add a parametric filter. So now we've created a filter that will correct this loudspeaker, but this filter has to be windowed to a length that we can practically use in the processor. So let's look at the export tab. The upper plot shows the fur filter in two ways. The dark green line is the plot of the actual coefficients that will be exported and saved to file. The lighter green line shows the absolute magnitude of these coefficients in dB. The peak of the fur filter is 198 samples, set in the fur setup tab, and the filter length 
is set to 616 samples. The impulse response of the perfect or ideal fur filter goes left and right to infinity, but for practical reasons we need to limit this to a particular length for the processor. To minimise discontinuities at the start and the end of the truncated fur impulse response, windowing, that's a fade in and a fade out, is used. This example uses a cosine tapered window, which puts a cosine function at the first 10% of the samples before the peak and the last 10% of samples after the peak. There are other window functions that can be chosen in the drop down here. Each function affects the final filter in slightly different ways. The middle plot shows the ideal filter magnitude and phase, the light blue and light red lines, and the magnitude and phase after windowing the dark blue and dark red lines. See how the windowed fur filter doesn't perfectly match the ideal filter below about 500 Hz. This slight error due to truncation and windowing is shown more closely in the total error plot below. Reducing the error involves balancing and likely increasing the filter delay and filter length, and choosing a specific window. Here the light green dB display on the upper plot can help, generally keeping the filter magnitude at or below minus 60 dB near the ends of the filter will keep the error relatively low. Filter designs that are mostly minimum phase have most of their coefficients on the right side of the peak. Designs that are mostly linear phase have a symmetric split of coefficients either side of the centre of the peak. And whilst it's rare, there may be designs that are mostly maximum phase, with all their coefficients to the left of the peak. Now just for interest, the upper plot can also show the loudspeaker impulse response and step response both before and after convolving with this fur filter. Since this design is focused mainly on making the phase flat, much of the energy should pile up to make a sharper impulse, which is what we see. The peak can be made even sharper by flattening the phase above 10 kHz. Note that the convolved peak is 198 samples, which is the project's filter delay setting. Now to finally talk about exporting the fur filter. Fur Designer can export in a variety of open and brand proprietary formats, selectable using the drop down. The save button prompts for file name. And now we have a fur filter saved as a file. The save fur plus summary button saves all the gain, polarity, delay and IIR settings in a text file adjacent to the fur filter file. Finally, with the workflow, if the imported response is inverted on the Import tab, as we have here, the Export tab's Errors and Warnings text will turn red. This indicates that it might then be useful to invert the fur filter when saving, depending on whether or not the processor used for filtering has polarity invert options. And it's always good to confirm the effect of the fur filter with more measurements. For selected amplifiers and loudspeaker processors, gain polarity delay, IIR and FIR data can be directly transferred via direct processor functions. Using the Lake DTP window, data from up to three fur designer windows can be combined and pushed over the local network to the Lake FIR three-way module in the Lake controller. The PowerSoft DTP window saves all data to an XML file that can be loaded into Harmonia, either on the speaker EQ or the output EQ sections on both DTP windows. Pre-existing fur filters from sources other than fur designer can be sideloaded into fur designer with resampling if required and used along with fur designer's IIR filter, gain, delay and polarity settings. If the sideloaded fur filter is longer than the Lake or PowerSoft maximum fur filter length, a rewindowing function provides user adjustable shortening of a fur filter, with options to adjust the window function and time alignment to minimise the change in the filter due to shortening. Now let's look at some other features that augment the workflow. On the Import tab, the loudspeaker impedance can be loaded. Now the impedance appears behind many of the plots in the workflow. The impedance plot can also be enabled and disabled at the top here. 
The Second View checkbox opens up an additional view of the whole workflow. With Second View open, it's possible to edit one tab in the workflow whilst watching the effect of the changes on other stages of the workflow. Second View also includes a wavelet transform showing the time frequency effect of the filtering on the loudspeaker measurement. Another view, new for Fur Designer 3, is the Supplementary Responses view. Here, a directory of additional measurements can be loaded and viewed with all the filtering applied from the workflow, including gain, polarity, delay, IIR, and FIR filtering. The top view shows all the measurements overlaid with filtering applied. The lowest scroll area shows each individual measurement before and after filtering. Let's make a change on the Voicing tab and see the effect on the Supplementary Responses view. Now, returning to the Import tab, the Smart button launches the Smart Control dialog. Here we can connect to an instance of Rational Acoustic Smart, either locally or anywhere on the network, query the measurement list, control a signal generator, and stream a spectrum or transfer function measurement directly from Smart. A snapshot of the streaming measurement can be grabbed into the local measurement list and renamed. Any of these measurements can be sent to the Import tab or the Target tab, and a group of measurements can be selected and sent to the Averaging tab. So let's look at the measurement averaging. This function is separate to the filter design workflow and is used to average multiple measurements together into one measurement, which can then be copied to the Import tab or the Target tab. Measurement averaging can load a directory of measurements or receive measurements directly from Smart, as it is here, and it has automatic time alignment, relative weighting adjustments, and multiple averaging methods. The averaged response can also be saved to file. Let's load a directory of measurements. On the second tab, we can compare a selected reference measurement with each of the other measurements. We can select the averaging mode. We can then view all the measurements behind the averaged result. We can then also look at the impulse response. On the Save tab, we can actually save the measurement to file. And finally, one other thing to note is that most plot colors can be customized by right clicking on the rectangle next to the checkbox. The colors are stored and loaded when the program is next run, and the default colors can be restored in the Preferences dialog. So that ends the overview of Fur Designer 3. Thank you very much for watching.